Hi everybody, so I'm scaling up and I'm experimenting with some different types of canvas. This one is one that I got a while ago and it is, uh, this is about six and a half feet tall by nine feet wide and it is, uh, has a clear gesso on it and it's linen, but it's super thin. So I, um, the other canvases I've been using have been thicker. This is like um, 13 ounces. So I was not really sure, and you guys can tell me what you've experienced with canvases that come on rolls, because when I first got it, I remember calling the company and asking, well, because it's clear gesso, what side is it the inside or outside that has that clear gesso on it? And I, I wrote down in my notes that they said it's on the outside, but then when I unrolled it, clearly it was the inside that had the cloudiness to it, which is what happens when you put clear gesso over anything there's a slight cloudiness to it and then i also did a like a water test i sprayed both sides and the outside uh the water soaked right in the inside it kind of was more splotchy and then it kind of got kind of whitish so i'm i'm pretty positive that the gesso is on the inside but again the company told me that it was on the outside so I, all these things, you know, I question, you know, am I doing the right thing? But anyways, um, that little scrap that's over there, I worked on that this morning and I have it so that, you know, the inside of the roll, which is what I think where the clear gesso was, I have that on the outside and, and sure enough, as I was using my acrylic on there, and I will be using acrylic, it did not soak through. <laughs> so that was my test. So anyways, I'm just gonna get started over here and I'm thinking mark making because it's a huge area to cover. And I'm just sort of like in this, this period of uh, time when you know there's a lot of uneasiness, there's a lot of chaos in our society and I just kind of want to be ultra expressive. So I'm gonna be using large tools so some of the things I have here would be, you know, brushes that are on these poles that are extended so I can be very expressive. And then I have, you know, this, this brush comes on the way it is. It's a plein air brush, but it's hard to get now. So anyways, but I have that brush. Oh, I was thinking I would use like a sponge roller and I'm, I've got the, the handle that goes on it, but I may also use the sponge in my hand. I've never tried that before. It's one of those um, roller sponges, you know, that's about four inches wide. Let me know if you have experience with clear gessoed canvas on a roll, whether the clear gesso is on the inside or the outside. I'd love to know your experience and then let me know what brand it was. Here is the sponge tool I was talking about. You can get longer um, handles, but I'm just gonna try this. And I've also tried these Montana refillable markers. Uh, they work quite well. And on this small one over here, that's exactly what I used was this Montana refillable marker. And I did Google like the best way to store these guys so that the sponge tips don't uh, get you know dried out. And they tell you to store them horizontally, not up, not down, but horizontally. I'm just gonna have fun. I'm gonna start out with black. I've got my stool here because it is a really tall canvas and I've got my tray full of black paint here. I did add a little bit of um, airbrush medium to it, but that's all it is right now. It's just black. I'm gonna kind of do something similar to what I did over there. I'm trying to go for like really unusual marks. So move this out of the way and just, and the cool thing about a sponge roller is you can use like the end, you can use the side, you know, whatever. There are a lot of different ways you can use this roller. So, and I, I definitely want like drips and um, just really expressive mark making. So it's really fun to be on such a large canvas because obviously, um, and I'm getting paint on my watch. I had to cover up my outlets down here because I just know how messy this will be. I like the natural color of this linen canvas. I basically want to cover, I mean, my idea is because I've not used this particular canvas before, I really just want to cover this whole thing with, I'll start with black, you know, but then I just want to 
kind of keep overlapping and overlapping and overlapping and overlapping my marks because I, I feel like it, I guess. And I want to be sure to do this all over thing. It's, it's great, you know, to get used to, right now, just to get used to the, the amount of like canvas there is, there's a whole lot here. And so I do have a lot of space to cover. It's just tacked to my wall. And I've got this piece of wood up here holding it. And then I just had to tack the sides and the bottom. Very easy and If it gets to the point where it needs to be stretched, um, that should be pretty easy to do, hopefully. Oops, I just dropped some on the floor. Just want to kind of vary my marks. So I do have the sponge tool. Notice how I can use the end, almost like drawing, but it's a lighter mark. And then, so I kind of want to cover up as much of the, uh, the original raw canvas, but not all of it. Like I want some of it to show. So I'm just fairing, let's get some big marks in there. to connect some of these masses here. Not thinking, just um, reacting, really. And I'm sure I'll be using my hands at some point. It's always fun. Great opportunity for asemic writing. It's a great way to get your workout for the day. That's kind of cool. Like, you can see what happens there when it kind of drags and makes that sound. I'm trying to get a feel for the width and the height. So obviously there's a lot of energy going on. Take a while for this to dry. But I don't have to let it dry. I mean, I can certainly go into another color and I may well do that. I've used up most of the black in this tray, which just means that I can either, you know, move on to a different way of applying the paint. It doesn't have to be all this sponge roller. That was just an idea. So as I change colors with the sponge roller, I'm just going to, instead of having to clean out each one, I'm gonna pop it into this uh, grocery plastic bag here and just kind of roll it up a little bit so that it doesn't dry out and then detach the uh, handle and then be able to use it later. And I've learned that if I, if I squeeze it too much inside this plastic, it will actually um, make the sponge roller kind of get in a funky, weird state. So you have to kind of roll it loosely like that. And this will be my black roller. I'm gonna save that for later. All right, now I'm just gonna move into like uh, something else and I don't know. Somehow because of the warmth of the canvas, I'm <clears throat> thinking I might do some gold. Yeah, it's just yellow over. Use a brush and, and I'm going to 
in this other bit. I'm just feeling just the warmth of this canvas and so I'm going to add some airbrush medium again. I want to encourage some drips but like the last painting I did, this one I just want to have it be maybe from the brush instead of from the whole bottle of paint. So I've added, you can kind of see the consistency here. It's um, quite runny. So I'm keep stirring. It's a nice uh, thin consistency. Here's my, um, everybody asks me what these brushes are. These are Jewel plein air brushes and unfortunately uh, they kind of went out of stock or maybe the company folded during COVID. But this, if you can find it, it's a 12 round Jewel plein air. Let's see if I can show you that. Um, Jewel plein air. Nice long handle, but you, you know, you don't have to have this brush. You can just make your own, like get a dowel rod and stick a brush on it. So I just, um, again, want to, even though the black's probably not completely dry, I don't care too much. And if it mixes, it mixes, although it looks like it is kind of, it's not really mixing. So it's probably drying pretty quickly on the canvas. So just very free and expressive. There, it picked up a little black, but then as soon as I pick it up, in the, if, as soon as I put the brush back into the gold paint, it's, it's regular color. Now this is not gonna show up terribly well. I mean, a little bit, but I just, there, there we go. So get some different kinds of marks. Tried to cover up my outlets, but one never knows. Um, it's really expressive. Marks. So here's a kind of a bare spot and so if it mixes with the black, great. It's fine with me. I did mark off the boundaries in case this were to get stretched. And uh, but I, instead of putting tape on it, I just drew a line because I, I really do want to paint into the salvage, which is like, well, here's the line, and I want to paint into the salvage area that would get stretched so that if, it, if and when it gets stretched, um, there's, you know, part of the painting there. It's a, a wraparound painting. I like that. So, I'm trying to get some drips going here. Here's some. Just have to load up the brush and let it drip down. I'm trying to vary shapes and just for the heck of it, I'm not thinking, but maybe a more concentrated area of this gold color. And even at this early stage, it's kind of fun to move it around. My, my real goal is just to, there it really mixed with that black, which is still wet. Um, cover up most or, yeah, most of the original raw canvas, but let some of it peek through because I do love that natural color. That's one of the reasons why I wanted the clear gesso. So the whole point of it is to have clear gesso. If I cover it all up, then what's the point? I might, have, might as well have used the white gesso. So let me know in the comment section if you guys use any uh, clear gesso, if you like it. I usually use, if I'm, if I'm gessoing my own canvas or panel, it's Liquitex clear gesso. I don't know, uh, well, what I did read this morning is that Golden does recommend then using like a matte, I think a matte medium or a matte, some sort of matte, matte medium, I guess. Yeah, matte medium. Uh, in, because they don't have what's necessarily called clear. So their matte, poly, matte acrylic medium would be in the place of Liquitex, which is specifically called a clear gesso. And 
trying to get into all the areas, even though I'm not using a stool yet, but you can tell that I tend to concentrate these marks where I can reach the easiest, but I can get up there. So I do like some of this dripping that's happening. It's not too much. It's a moderate amount. It gives a sense of gravity. Some splatters. Gotta watch what's in the vicinity here if I'm splattering like this because I tried to move all my finished work out of the way. I may go into white next. Um, I do plan on this being super colorful because of all the overlapping. I know a lot of it will get covered up. So let me know in the comments, you know, if you guys enjoy working large and how large you've worked and what have you worked on, what mediums have you used. I'd love to know. For me, this is the largest I've attempted and it is on canvas. And be sure to check out Rexart because they have great supplies. They've got all kinds of, Rexart has so many amazing art supplies, not just canvas, not just custom panels, but everything you might need. So my next canvas order will probably be with them. They're a family owned business and I love the idea of supporting a family owned business. Hey everybody, happy Halloween. It's time for another Rex Art giveaway. This time they are giving away three panels and three frames and I'll show you what they look like. These are the awesome basswood frames that they make and they make custom panels that fit right inside. Let me show you. They're eighth inch and they're great to work on. I work on these all the time and when you're all done with your artwork you can pop them right into the frame like this and it's a perfect fit. Um, there's just no other fit like this. I've tried a lot of other brands and believe me, the panels just don't fit into the frames the way this does. So these are one and three eighths inch um, deep and the panels are eighth inch uh, thick and you'll get three frames and three panels because they're so generous. They are a family owned company. I love this company. I love their customer support. I love their custom panels. I uh, have done so much work on their custom panels. And like, if you need an odd size, where are you gonna go and get it? So um, again, a family owned uh, business. And to, here's what you have to do to win. Okay, it's gonna be a, a random drawing from, people go to the link in my description under this video. And this is video 219, where I'm showing you how I start this large nine foot wide by six and a half foot tall um, painting on canvas. So underneath this video, um, you're going to, you're going to see a link. It's an Airtable link. That's where I collect your answers. So I want you to answer two questions. Number one, let me know the time point in this video, number 219, where I'm working super large scale and where I announced the Rex art giveaway. I'm looking for uh, around 17 minutes and 43 seconds. Okay. So you have to give me that information. So I know that you watch my video. The second thing is I'd love for you to suggest a topic for a future video on my channel. So two things, give me the time point that I mentioned the Rex art giveaway. It's 17 minutes and 43 seconds Hint, hint. And also Give me a topic you'd love to see me do on my YouTube channel. And I will uh, randomly choose two winners. There are going to be two winners. Two winners that live in the U.S. will get three frames and three panels from Rexart. Again, 
thank them because they are so super generous. In my comment section, please say, thank you RexArt for doing this giveaway. And the more thank yous that you give them, the more they're gonna let me do a lot more giveaways on my channel. Okay, so that's really important. Say thank you RexArt in my comment section. Okay, so the drawing will be on October 30th. That's next week on Wednesday, just before Halloween midnight and i live in montana so midnight mountain daylight time be sure to get your entry in again the links in my description below this video fill out that form submit it and good luck happy halloween i hope you win thanks everyone again trying to just scuffle over and catch some of this uh raw canvas but again not all of it and the scumbling here is fairly transparent sometimes it mixes with the black where it hadn't dried all the way and just trying to move that idea around i have to keep standing back so that i get the full view of this until I haven't done much down here <laughs> of course the very bottom and maybe the very top are easy to ignore because they're so low or so high so um, instead of using this brush I'm gonna put this in my bucket of water so it doesn't dry out and just use my my hand right now to yet another mark making tool is my hand there's nothing like the hand to to be an expressive mark making tool get into the borders here might as well use as much paint up as I can I do have a step stool, even so I'm going to have to get on that fairly soon so that I can get to all areas of this. So that's just the uh, yellow ochre. So. Here's the end of the tray. I did use it all up, and now I'm gonna go into the next stage, whatever that might be. I don't know.